The simplest machine is the lever. Centuries ago, the Greek philosopher Archimedes said that given a long enough lever and a place to stand, he could lift the world. Let's investigate this claim. A lever consists of a length of wood or a metal bar supported by a fulcrum, which is the red triangular support in the figure. A lever can multiply force or simply change the direction of an applied force. In this case, an applied force on the left end lifts a load, our dog bow, on the other end. Operation of a lever follows the conservation of energy. At the same time we do work on one end, say by pushing down on it, the other end does the same amount of work in lifting our load, in this case, dog bow. In accord with the conservation of energy and assuming no friction, work input will equal work output. Or force times distance input will equal force times distance output. In this case, where the input side of the lever is longer than the shorter output side, we write this with a big D for input and a big F for output. We write different size symbols to indicate relative magnitudes. In this way, a lever is able to multiply input forces. An example of a lever in disguise is a simple pulley. Nellie uses a pulley to lift a load. She pulls downward and the load moves upward. This simple pulley only changes the direction of her force. Can you see the lever within the pulley that Nellie Newton uses to lift a load? Let's look at this with symbols. Force times distance input equals force times distance output. We show the weight of the load with symbol W and the force she applies F. Then F times D equals W times H. So the force F she exerts multiplied by the distance D pulled equals W times H, the resulting work done on the load W. The force F that Nellie exerts is equal to the tension in the rope. But what is that tension? It's the same at Nellie's end as at the end supporting the weight W. So I erase Nellie's force F and replace it with weight W. Hence, D equals H or H equals D. Either way. As said, this pulley arrangement gives no advantage other than changing the direction of Nellie's force. Consider a different arrangement with the load supported by two strands of the same rope. The strand attached to the ceiling and the strand that Nellie pulls upward. Note on the lever nature of the pulley that the fulcrum is at the left rather than in the center as before. Output at the middle and input at the right. So the tension in the rope, which is the same everywhere along the rope, is only half W. And we see that the height to which the load is raised is F times D equals W times H. W over 2 times D equals W times H is equal to half Nellie's pulling distance D. A little geometry confirms this. Since the left side of the rope doesn't move up and the right side moves up a distance D, the load moves an average of these two rope motions, which is one half D. So often in physics, there's more than one way to get the same answer. We'll see in a bit that counting rope strands supporting a load is usually the easiest way to analyze a pulley system. Here's a double pulley system. This time, Nellie pulls downward. How many strands support the load? Again, it's just two, not three. 
the strand Nelly is holding doesn't directly support the load. So again, the tension is W over 2. From F times D equals W times H. W over 2 times D equals WH. So we see H equals half D. Again, the height raised is half the distance that Nelly pulls. If, for example, she pulls downward 50 centimeters, the load rises 25 centimeters. Ah, this time Nellie has a three-pulley system and again lifts the load by pulling downward. How many strands support the load? Counting them, we see it's three. Three strands supporting the load means the tension in the rope is W over three. We pretend that the ropes are all vertical, although for clarity our compressed view shows a slant, particularly in the middle rope. And from force times D equals W times H, W over 3 times D equals W times H, where we see H equals 1 third D. So for every 30 centimeters of downward pull, Nelly raises the load 1 third, 10 centimeters. For lifting heavy loads, like the engine of an automobile, even more complicated pulley arrangements may be necessary, like a chain hoist, which we won't explore here. The factor of force multiplication is called the mechanical advantage, which is the ratio of the output force to the input force. Levers and pulleys multiply forces or distances, but please remember, never energy. No machine can multiply energy. So could Archimedes use a long, long lever to lift the world? In principle, yes. Archimedes was talking about an ideal case, but a case with merit. He was excited because he had discovered the principle of force multiplication. Pulleys we've considered are ideal, without friction. In practice, friction significantly reduces the mechanical advantage. Many of the systems we study in physics are ideal systems. Though ideal systems seldom occur in practice, treating systems as if they were ideal is very helpful. Clouds are removed that may otherwise obscure the yum physics beneath. If you get into engineering or advanced physics, then you can deal with more practical situations. For now, let me leave you with a question. If 10 strands of rope support a load in a complex but ideal pulley system, how much force must Nelly supply to lift a 1,000 Newton load? Again, 10 strands. How much force to lift 1,000 Newtons? Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.